Good morning guys, welcome to the construction site on uh, Tuesday. Today we're pouring the concrete for the garage and for the uh, bathroom and workshop. The guys are preparing the reinforcement, uh, the steel mesh uh, reinforcements that we're going to place in the concrete. We fitted all the pipes yesterday for the sanitary. Everything is looking fine. The pump is here. The guys are getting ready with the foil. The construction foil 0.3 millimeters thick. So not easy to tear. And the concrete truck is here too. So we can start pouring concrete really shortly. Awesome! You can see Mr. Jan is pouring the concrete. Mr. Uh, Mirek is following him, uh, pressing down in the corners so the fill is good and the foil doesn't uh, keep the concrete up. In general, it's going very good. And then the guys are bringing in the reinforcements and uh, laying them down and cutting them to size. about uh, two squares overlap on the rebar so very good There's a little uh, deeper part section here, so uh, we're going to put some rebar at an angle also into here and then a spacing for the linear drain and, uh, so that there's a cutout in the concrete later on. This kind of uh, concrete pouring is really stress-free, not really anything critical that can go wrong. So the concrete also needs to be vibrated so that it fits nicely around the reinforcement. Alright guys, so I'm at the pump. And you can see the pump has a grate on top uh, to filter out things like this. You can see this rock. It came out from the previous concrete truck. Basically, it happens sometimes and then it could block up, jam up the pump or if it would be smaller, go into the tube and cause some uh, pressure buildup in dangerous situations. So this grate is here for those kind of stuff. It's a really 
today about 35 degrees Celsius or thereabout. So not the best for concrete pouring. That's why we put some additional water in the concrete to make it more wet. It will evaporate rather quickly and we'll probably have to pour lots of water on top of it throughout today and tomorrow and afterwards. So here is the exit from the linear drain. Right, so over here the guys are building a placeholder for the linear drain. We're going to put it in the concrete, wait for the concrete to bind some and pull it out. And the space that will be left is a bit bigger than the actual size of the linear drain, about a centimeter on each side and two centimeters on the end. And this will allow us to easily mount the linear drain with some uh, concrete around it. So Mr. Janos was here supervising, now he's leaving for uh, his next job. Thank you Mr. Janos, thank you Pani Janosu for the opportunity. Because there was some concrete left in the truck, it's going back to the concrete place and the pump is going to dump the bucket the remainder of the concrete will back it back into the concrete truck so nothing is wasted the guys are having a competition who can balance the longest <laughs> the losers they fall face first in the concrete <laughs> So the guys are picking random heavy stuff from the construction site, putting it on this uh, form so that it stays put under the concrete, doesn't lift. Alright, so the concrete is out. We're waiting for it to dry up a bit to smooth it out with the helicopter. I've pulled up some uh, water from the pump way back over there. I bought. 60 meters of hose, uh, three quarter inch hose. And the water pressure on this end is uh, minimal, but we're still filling up the, the, uh, the container for water so the guys can mix mortar. And then we can also uh, pour some water on the concrete throughout the hot day once we smooth it out so that it doesn't crack while drying. All right, guys, so for our uh, makeshift septic tank that we put in a couple of days ago, I've been reading the internet and it turns out these containers, these white plastic thousand liter containers, are not very good for resisting crushing forces underground. A lot of people suggested to put a box around them made out of uh, OSB or plywood or something like that. So I got... Uh, 18 millimeter thick boards. They come in uh, two and a half by one point something uh, meters. So I need to cut them in half, and preferably I would use a skill saw or a circular saw or a jigsaw or something. But since we're lacking those on the construction site, I'm gonna use a chainsaw to cut it uh, in half, both both sheets to build a box around the container. I got a excavator coming for uh, 3 o'clock it's gonna dig out the side so we can slide the box on top and hopefully it's not crushed already too badly that it would leak we'll, uh, check it out when the excavator comes all right let's begin that I'm placing the cut on is, has a little dent under it so I don't damage the 
chainsaw chain with some rocks or dirt. So just cutting very slightly above ground. Okay, when you start a chainsaw, this is a very controversial topic on the internet. Normally you hold the chainsaw like this, right? Left hand forward. And some people say that they can drop start it. But if you want to drop start it, I would recommend switching hands because with this motion, the chain can turn towards your body. If you switch hands, the pivot point is here and can, it will turn away from your body when you pull this string. If you pull it this way, it turns towards you. So, and of course, the brake. I always engage the brake when I'm done with it, so. Alright, the pieces are cut, now I'm gonna build a box. at end and this side will then overlap the outside. That's close enough for me. I'll still put in maybe two boards across to maybe tie some chains so the excavator can lift this and possibly provide support for a lid. I just grab some boards, cut them to size, and that will be it. All right, guys, my design is ready. I've put uh, two boards together with some uh, screws, such that I can make a top plate with some uh, holes for the sanitary installation, so you can walk on it, and, uh, and uh, you don't have to be worried that you're gonna crush the tank with your own weight and stuff like that. All right, so while I've been building my box, the guys have been running the helicopter in the garage, and you can see the helicopter marks on uh, the concrete but uh, once this dries a little bit they'll run it again and this should disappear and may leave a nice smooth surface and Mr. Pavel and Mr. Mirak over there they're uh, building the walls laying bricks all right guys the excavator is here we're going to start digging for the sanitary tank and the box is ready everything's ready so let's go Looks like the container is already bent out of shape. We'll see if it's salvageable or if I need a new one. It looks totally beat up. Man, the ground has a lot of force on it. Let that be a lesson not only to me but everybody watching. If you put something in the ground like this, make sure that you stand tons of pressure on the ground. I didn't think about it at first, but now it seems pretty obvious, so yeah, won't make that mistake twice. All right, guys, we're in the hole we just dug, and I was going to show you how pointless this has become. You take a look inside, 
the whole thing has been reduced to a box maybe 30 by 30 centimeters by the pressure on the walls I'm guessing uh, this needs replacing so this is really sad lesson learned alright guys that will be it for today the container is unsalvageable it's squished on all sides I'm gonna leave now the guys are doing fine laying bricks tying reinforcements for the post in the house and Mr. Jan is still smoothing out the concrete that we poured today so everything is going fine tomorrow we'll probably start laying bricks on the garage it will be another fun day thank you very much for watching this episode I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I'll see you next time bye guys it's really hot 39 degrees Woo! awesome